My name is Doug Collins. Welcome to Aspen Photography Tutorials. Today we're going to swing it off with Christopher Gomez. Galaxy season is just right around the corner, and Christopher is going to show his step by step processing on how to enhance galaxies. Also, stick around at the end of the show, there's a special clip I'd like to show you. So, today we will be processing M33, which one of our forum members from myastroimages.com was kind enough to share his files with me uh, to allow me to process this image. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into things and let's go to Photoshop and we're going to open our files over here and again we have stretched our images just slightly in Deep Sky Stacker in order to convert them from uh, FITS files into TIFF files. So we're going to go ahead and highlight them all and just drag them into Photoshop. Alright, so it has opened all our images and now we're going to go to a new image. So hit File, New, and we're going to make an RGB image. So go to RGB Color, 16-bit, work in RGB, and we're going to hit OK. And now if you go to the Channels layer, you're going to see our red, green, and blue, and we're going to paste the corresponding channels there. So let's start out with the red. We're going to hit Control a to select all and then Control c which will copy it. Go back here, click on our red channel, and hit Control v and that will paste the image there. So let's now go to the green and do the same thing. And let's go to the blue and do the same thing. Alright, and now let's click on the RGB, and you can see all the channels have lined up to make a color image. But as you can see, things uh, look like they have a ways to go before this image looks like a final image uh, that we would like to keep. So, um, first things we're going to do is let's go ahead and go back to our layers, and we're going to click on our levels adjustment. Um, we're going to hit our black eyedropper here, double click it and you can set what your black point can be. So I like to keep mine at 30 uh, for all the red, uh, green, and blue channels. Uh, so you can type in here uh, 30 for all of them. And you're going to hit OK. And here it's asking if you want to save this as a new target colors as defaults. And I'm going to hit yes because I'm always going to use that 30 as my default. So. Um, now go ahead and we're going to set the black point, which we're going to look for the darkest part of the image and hit the black point um, and it will automatically uh, kind of balance things for us quite a bit and just kind of set our levels of where our blacks need to be. Um, and as you can see, we still kind of have a gradient, so we're going to do a couple things to this image to um, kind of eliminate that and start working on our final process. Use a nice plugin that we have to eliminate the gradient called uh, gradient exterminator. So let's go ahead and copy uh, our layers that we have here and duplicate them by dragging them down over here. And let's go ahead and merge this uh, merge layers to uh, just create a, a layer that has both of these two layers merged. So uh, the way we run gradient exterminator is basically we choose uh, at the beginning what we don't want uh, to exterminate as far as a gradient in. So anything that you uh, have, like a galaxy, a nebula, that you don't want touched, you're going to go ahead and select it. And we're going to go ahead and save this selection. So we're going to save the selection as galaxy. Um, and then we'll come back to that in a little bit. But Let's hit OK, and now we're going to run the gradient exterminator plugin by uh, inversing the selection. So that's saying we are selecting the entire background except the galaxy. And we're going to go to our filters, RC Astro, gradient exterminator, and we're going to first run a medium and a low uh, run, and let's see what it does for us. Okay, so kind of balances a lot of things out, uh, kind of removes good amount of the gradient, but we've got to run this one last time 
um, and now we're going to find uh, use it to find detail. We're going to hit the uh, magic wand tool, and what this is going to do is going to select a lot of our stars that we don't want to take into account in our gradient extermination. But we're going to also remember we don't want the galaxy, so we are going to load the selection and subtract the selection. And let's hit galaxy there and hit OK there. So right now it has the entire background selected, the stars, and the galaxy uh, so that we can run the next portion of our gradient exterminator. So let's go ahead and run it again. We're going to hit fine and high, and then we're going to hit OK. All right, so let's click out there. And you can definitely see by toggling on and off that you can see uh, we have definitely eliminated a lot of the gradient that uh, was present and it really has flattened our deep uh, sky and background of our image over here. Um, so looking at our image we still have uh, kind of our galaxy It's looking a little dull stars are also looking a little dull so let's go ahead and stretch this image just a little bit with a level stretch alright so we are gonna bring this down uh, little by little you can see that galaxy start to pop up. Uh, let's go ahead and do this at 197. And then uh, take a look at your black channel over here. And I'm going to want that to drop to about 35. So I'm going to click here on a black point. Just keep my wand hovering there and use my arrow keys to just try to start to move our black point up until I get to that around 35 on there. And so we move our wand around here. The levels are around 34, 33, uh, 35. So let's go ahead and just double click that. Let's drop uh, this down just a little bit there. And there we go. Um, so we have 35 pretty much for our background. Uh, black point. Okay. And now looking at our image, we can see that our galaxy has started to pop out a little bit. Um, and we can toggle that on and off. You can definitely see how the stars are coming out a little bit more and how the galaxy is just becoming a little bit brighter. Um, looking at this image uh, kind of at the corners, we do have some edges uh, right along this uh, area here and if we kind of move along at the top as well so I'm going to go ahead and crop this image at this time to kind of eliminate those black borders so let's hit our crop tool and we're just going to bring that just a tad in on the left on the top not so much there on the top on the right and at the bottom as well and then I'm going to hit, let's go up just a little bit there. And then I'm going to hit the crop tool and say yes, I do want to crop images. So I've eliminated those black borders that we had. Um, and so looking at this image, let's go ahead and also do a layers adjustment here. Um, and we're going to hit levels. Uh, and drop this down uh, in the red channel because right now I want to start making that core look a little bit more yellow orange um, so we'll drop it a little bit here by stretching this channel in the red component and then we're going to kind of selectively choose things that we want from here so let's see how that looks right there and we're only going to use the core of the galaxy to be this color so we're going to invert this mask uh, by hitting invert and then we're going to show that back through by kind of brushing that in uh, our core area and we're make our, our paintbrush pretty decent size uh, hit it on a soft uh, brush there and let's go ahead and make sure it's on the white um, part of the, our paintbrush go ahead and hit the corner uh, sorry, hit the core of the galaxy 
and go ahead and click it once and you can see how toggling it on and off we brought a little bit more uh, yellow orange color to the core um, and we'll start processing it a little bit more uh, from here. Let's start working on our noise reduction. So if we kind of look at the background and really zoom in we can start to see that's a little bit too zoomed in. There we go. You can see a lot of the noise that we have going on here is attributed to color um, and so let's go ahead and zoom out right over here. All right, and what we're going to do is copy everything that, that we have here as a merge layer. So we're going to hit Control A, and then while holding Control and Shift together and clicking on C, it's going to copy everything that's merged, and hit Control V, and that will paste our copied and merged image on top. Okay, so let's go ahead and run one of Carboni's um, action sets here. The first one I'm going to do here is color blotch reduction. I'm going to hit play and let it run its course. Okay, and for some reason when I run these action sets it changes my mode to 18 8 bit so let's go ahead and change it back to 16. But let's go ahead and show you what it has really done for our, our background noise. And so before we had a lot of color noise and this really eliminates that noise in the background levels. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run one more uh, which is the deep space noise reduction uh, and this action set should take care pretty much of the rest of the noise that we have there on the background. And it's also going to apply a little bit to the galaxy but if you really see what it has done with all the noise and, and things that we have going on there when we toggle it on we can really see how things have gone from being real noisy to not so noisy at all. And let's go ahead and also remember to change it back to the 60 bits. Of our uh, noise reduction tools, uh, things get a little bit soft here around the galaxy, so let's go ahead and work on sharpening and bringing some contrast back into that galaxy. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy that layer, and we're going to run one of uh, Noel Carboni's action tool sets here that helps us uh, bring some. Uh, contrast into our image. So local contrast enhancement there and we're going to hit play. Alright and as you can see it has really brought in a little bit more sharper detail um, to our galaxy but as I can uh, take a look around our stars it's also doing things to our stars and I really don't want to do anything to the stars I want to leave them be. So let's go ahead and create a star mask and that is easily done by selecting the magic wand tool and clicking on any part of the background. Now let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit and while holding shift and clicking we're going to add the selection to what we currently have. And we're going to click on every, everywhere but our uh, stars so that we can create that nice star mask. Okay, so when you think you're happy with your selection, I'm going to hit select inverse and then select modify and then we're going to feather that selection by two uh, just to kind of uh, make things a little bit more subtle. So let's go to um, layer and we're going to go to layer mask and then we're going to say hide selection. So go ahead and hit alt click. And then you can see your star mask and how it has blocked out all the stars in your uh, actual image. And I'm going to take this one further step, uh, a step further here. And I'm going to make a group uh, because I really want to say I only want to apply this to our galaxy. So I add a layer mask. And I'm going to inverse this. And I'm going to take my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and paint back over the galaxy in the areas that I want to show through. So let's make the brush size just a little bit bigger. And again, let's go ahead and paint back over our galaxy here. Alt click on our galaxy 
Let's turn on our mask to make sure that there are the correct selection. I'm going to go back with black and kind of narrow this back in here. And so when we click on our galaxy and our mask, we're really only saying that all our sharpening and contrast is only applied to the galaxy here and not any of the stars or the background. Again, we're going to copy everything that's merged and put it as a layer on top and we're going to run uh, one more iteration of this local contrast enhancement. Uh, but before we go into anything further, always remember to change your image back to 16 uh, bits before you apply any other uh, one of these actions. And so let's go ahead and play uh, that local contrast enhancement one last time. Before I forget, we're going to go back to 16 bits over here. Edit, undo there sometimes. I uh, press brushes by accident, but we're back to uh, if you double check that, you can see our mode is 16 bits again. And let's go ahead and cheat by using the star mask that we had created last time. And we're going to copy that one and then paste it here onto our image. And now we're going to create another group and then we're going to really. Uh, only show the portions that we want. So we invert that mask. And let's go ahead and zoom in here to our galaxy. And let's make our brush just a little bit smaller. And really, now we're going to just go ahead back and make sure that our brush is on the white. And we're going to go ahead and paint kind of over all our dust lanes. And these are really the only ones that I want to show in this layer. So go back and paint everywhere where you think there is a dust lane or any part that you want to enhance the contrast um, and kind of paint white over that mask to show, show it uh, through. Okay, and let's go ahead and hit alt click and you can see these are really the only areas of our image that we are uh, increasing the contrast uh, parts. So by toggling on and off you can see that we're only sharpening and bringing out those dust lanes. Stretch curve uh, just to kind of bring out a little bit more of that galaxy uh, its brightness. So uh, being that we have our levels of our background set to about 35 here on our info uh, palette um, what we're going to do is set a couple of anchor points here on our curve. Uh, and I'm going to hit 10 and 10, and 20 and 20, 30 and 30, and then 35 and 35. And what these points are doing is really keeping our background black point set at 35. So no matter what I do up here, everything in the background stays put. So. Let's go ahead and start playing with our curves here um, and seeing where we can go. And that looks pretty good there. So if we toggle things on and off, our galaxy is really becoming a lot brighter now. Uh, but also our stars are also being enhanced. And again, I don't want to touch anything with our stars. So let's go ahead and cheat again and copy that star mask paste the star mask here and then again I'm going to create a group um, and I'm going to cheat again and copy the known region that we want to uh, show through for only the galaxy and paste that on here and so basically now we're only applying this curve stretch to the galaxy and leaving all our stars and our backgrounds again the same untouched um, and really, uh, really selectively applying our layers to the areas that we want. So luminance layer, um, and go ahead and copy everything that's merged, and we're going to add it to our image here that we're working on. And um, as you can see, things are shifted a little bit because we had cropped our image in the past, so that's an easy fix.
um, to align everything. Just kind of set the opacity um, and hit the move tool and kind of move things where exactly they need to be. So if things are a bit difficult to get things exactly, you can just use the arrow keys and that usually is a little bit much easier. So let's go ahead and use those arrow keys. And again, toggle things on and off just to make sure that you are exactly over. And I think I'm kind of shifting maybe a little bit to the right. So let's go ahead and move that one to the left. Maybe up. No, that goes down. And there, it seems to be perfectly aligned. Okay? So, what I'm going to set this as is a luminosity layer. Um, and then again, what I'm going to do is go ahead and copy the luminosity layer. And then actually add it as a mask. Uh, Alt-click and Control-V there. And then again, what you can see, what... Uh, adding the luminosity itself as a mask, you can see how it kind of only uh, does things in a subtle way and not really do much every, everywhere else. So let's go ahead and zoom in there to our galaxy. And it's just really applying just a little bit of brightness to our stars and our galaxy. Uh, here um, and then again I'm going to go ahead and make a, a group there and really only apply this to the galaxy so I'm going to copy uh, this mask and then paste it here to our group mask uh, sorry, our group up there with our luminance. So really, now things are only being applied to our galaxy by toggling things on and off. And when I zoom in, let's toggle things on and off, on and off, and you can see how things just become just a little bit uh, brighter. So let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit here. And at this point, what I want to do is do a little bit of selective coloring. And let's go ahead and bring our magentas um, in the cyan. We're going to go ahead and bring this to zero. And I'm going to double click on this mask and invert. And then again, I only want to apply these changes to our known nebula here. So let's go ahead. Where we see little bits of nebulosity popping through, this is where you want to go ahead and color in back the nebulosity color by adding a little bit more red uh, to those areas. Okay, and if we toggle that color on and off, you can see how our nebula uh, are really coming a little bit more red, and a little bit more um, back to life. Okay, and then let's zoom out here. And what we're going to do now is also increase our saturation. And by doing a block method, um, it's a little bit less aggressive and less destructive. So we're going to copy everything that's merged and paste the layers on top three times. What we're going to do is make a, our top layer a luminosity layer and our middle layer a soft light. And then you can really see how that really boosted our saturation in, in our galaxy. And we're going to go ahead and click these three layers and merge them together so that we can see kind of the effects of toggling things on and off. And again, it brings more color and more saturation 
into our galaxy. Um, one thing I'm going to do here is going to go ahead and maybe brighten this core just a little bit. So let me go ahead and copy, uh, hit, and let me go ahead and paste that layer on top again, set it as luminosity, and I'm going to mask it again, invert, and I'm going to apply it just to the core so that my core is just a tad bit more brighter. I'm going to go ahead and kind of make it a little bit bigger and hit, click that once. And again, it's just very subtle kind of things, but that, that just brings our core just a tad just a tad bit brighter there. All the steps that uh, we took to create this image, uh, there's no one uh, formula to do every single image. Uh, sometimes we do steps in different orders, uh, but generally learning the concepts of using a couple plugins like Greening Exterminator and some of the uh, tools that Carboni has uh, has provided, um, such as the uh, deep uh, deep space noise reduction, color block reduction, uh, can help your images come a long way, um, as well as learning how to do uh, levels adjustments, selective color adjustments, star masks, um, all those things that you will learn uh, to do will kind of come together and you will kind of be playing around with an image and try different things uh, for them to see what they do and sometimes you'll end up with uh, great things and sometimes you'll have to kind of start from scratch and, and do things in, in different orders so kind of learn how to use those tools play around a little bit uh, in Photoshop and uh, have lots of fun would like to extend a special thank you to Christopher Gomez for showing us how to go through the steps of enhancing a galaxy. If you have an astrophotography tip or trick that you would like to record a video on, please send it to dhubble at gmail.com. Also, if this is your first time watching, I would like you to subscribe. I publish two astrophotography videos on the 1st and 15th of every month. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Oh, and here's the little video game.